you're listening to Lord Friendly with Chris Takashi, and once again, the incomparable Alice Bell. How are you doing? Oh, babe. <laughs> I've never been called incomparable before. Although, if you think about Aww. it, is that really a compliment? <laughs> Nothing compares. Nothing I mean, nothing compares, compares to, to me. To the Fatberg, and nobody thinks the Fatberg is great, but <laughs> I did mean it as a compliment. No, there's a there's there's a comparison in the name with the Berg. Ah, oh, that's it's true. It's being compared to an iceberg. That's true. That's true. Find a better example. And the fat thing too. So <laughs> it's not yeah. very unique at all, is what you're saying. All those condoms that are stuck into it, no. all the like dirty diapers and everything that has. That's just my life. <laughs> well, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the fat bird. That's just my life. It's comparable to my life. Wait, so are you saying that you're not incomparable? That the fat bird is a comp for your life? Yes, actually, yes. It's a comp for my life, but it's not comparable to me as no, a person. Because you're unique. You're special. You're one of a kind. I am special. I am one of a kind. <laughs> In a good way. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I've got my work review coming up tomorrow. Oh, yeah? My one-month review. Are you scared or excited? or? I am shitting bricks. Mm. All of the bricks. I have diarrhea. That's what a fatberg would do, so there you go. Yeah. Today we learnt that Alice is actually a fatberg. No, you're not. Oh, babe. <laughs> So, has anything interesting happened this week, Chris? Is that my cue to come up with an interesting story? I was on Twitter today, so this congressman made a post, and, and it's like she's talking about her rival um, in an upcoming election. Is like, this the kind of person you want to elect? Because, like, not only have they been hanging out with white supremacists, but they're also connoisseurs of Bigfoot erotica. <laughs> And this is what our politics have become in 2018. Okay, so so you know how um, in uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, which we still need to mm. carry on playing, by the way, because there is still an episode in the works somewhere. But, uh, yeah, so you know how that's got, like, the parody political ads yeah, in it? Yeah. This is more ridiculous than those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Irony's dead. There's, it's just... Yeah. Reality is far more absurd. I mean, first of all, how is it even a thing? I guess I shouldn't be a surprise that it's a thing, but how is it a thing? Rule 34, <laughs> mate. Come on. Who looks at Bigfoot and thinks, God, I want to see that thing having sex. I mean, it's just... <laughs> you know that, like, Snape Empreg is, like, a whole, like, subgenre of fan fiction. What is Snake Empreg? Me is that even English? Uh, Snape. Snape, as in oh, Severus Snape. Oh, Severus Snape. M, M preg. Ah, so male pregnancy. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it's a whole genre of fan fiction. And I have never dared delve into it. Um, <laughs> I still think if someone was into that, they'd be more electable than this guy. Because at least they're into fucking Harry Potter. So I'd be like, ooh, cool. I share something in common with this person. I might vote for them. <laughs> Obviously, that's not how you should vote. You should not vote based on their... Um, <laughs> fandom of Harry Potter, but <laughs> this guy is into um, Bigfoot erotica, and yeah, I mean, Jennifer had the joke, uh, had a joke on chat, which is, I wish she'd post on Twitter, but she said, well, you know what they say about a man with Bigfoot. <laughs> that is fantastic. I can see why you got Jennifer to replace me. <laughs> but, um, oh my god, my favorite thing about this is the reaction. Mm. I would just like to point out, by the way, that the uh, two people involved in this are called Wriggleman and Cockburn. <laughs> Wait, Wriggleman is the the man with the Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, and Cockburn's the Democrat. Okay. Can we can we just uh, take this in for a minute, Cockburn? <laughs> And Riggleman. I think it's a bit weird too for for her to be pointing, you know, out kink shaming the other guy, right? I mean, she should be focusing on the whole white supremacy thing. That is really bad. That is something that you should never be yeah. voting for. <laughs> but it's kind of 
been pushed to the wayside by her like bringing up the kink shaming stuff the bigfoot stuff which is <laughs> incredibly absurd but technically not like wrong i should say yeah it's just basically i don't think that you should exploit anyone's sexual preferences unless they have actually done something that harms another human being yeah. or harmed you know? a potential like missing link to the human being <laughs> <laughs> yeah that as well harmed a potential giant ape man <laughs> that lives in the forest yeah that poor guy honestly how can he consent yeah, he can't he doesn't even exist how can he consent he can't do a lot of things it's like doing it with a ghost <laughs> the only reason that that um kind of popped up in my head was because i recently watched scary movie 2 oh it's awful why would you deliberately subject yourself to that? Because I've been feeling in a weird mood recently. And speaking of scary things, there is a TV show in the UK called Most Haunted. Mm -hmm. I just uh, found out that my current place of work has not one, but two episodes that have been filmed oh, there. Nice. And allow me to tell you about my own most haunting of experiences. <laughs> Please do. So, um, I've been training. I don't, I, I'm going to preface this by saying I don't believe in ghosts, supernatural, shit like that. It's all bollocks in my eyes, basically. Yeah, pretty much. But, um, Not Bigfoot, though. Bigfoot is real. Yeah, Bigfoot is real. Obviously, and he can't as consent. well as his, as well as his <laughs> sexual preferences. Yeah. And <laughs> What does Bigfoot fuck, by the way? Littlefoot. Oh, okay. Cardboard box. Is there a Mrs. Bigfoot? Yes. Okay. Or it could be just another Mr. Bigfoot. Oh, that's true. You know, we don't judge. That's true, that's true. We'll have to ask Congressman Riggleman. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully he's not a congressman by next year. But anyways, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, so um, we do ghost tours at my place of work. It is supposedly one of the most haunted buildings in England. Mm -hmm. Aren't all the buildings in England haunted, though, anyway? I don't know. Like I said, I don't particularly agree with it. Okay, I mean, is most haunted, like, maybe there's 15 ghosts instead of the usual 8 or 9? I mean... I don't know, I've never really gone around and counted okay. how many ghosts there are. You should do a poll. But, um, <laughs> how many ghosts are in this building? <laughs> Tap against the pipe and let me know. No, so I've been training for ghost tours at my place of work. Mm. And basically... It's going around the building doing the usual type of museum tour, but with a grislier edge. So you go through the usual facts about like the crimes, the punishments, things like that, and then you tie it back to historical characters that have been seen by people around the building or have been experienced. Mm. Now, like I said, I don't believe in this, and the girl who was training me for... Um, doing these ghost tours she's pretty skeptical as well right so um we were doing our second ghost tour of the night and there was only two people on this tour so it was a very individualized tour and uh, we went down to the laundry room and this is supposedly one of the most haunted areas in the entire building because you know what women hate most um dying whilst doing the laundry <laughs> I was going to say Harvey Weinstein, but that too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we were down there, and there was some banging in the very far corner that I thought was just pipes or something like that. Mm. But um, the person who was training me seemed a little bit confused, and uh, every time that we approached that corner, it stopped. Oh. Now, I thought, I thought that she was just playing up because we had some guests there. So I thought she was just, like, playing oh, up the whole... Yeah, yeah. Ooh, having a laugh. Ooh, but um yeah no i asked her when the guests had gone whether that had happened before because so i thought it's an old building it's got old plumbing something's going to be banging or creaking or something like that and she was like no i've done hundreds of ghost tours and i've never seen that before oh spooky so uh, that kind of shit me up because I've been working in the laundry all week. I feel like a lot of it is just, you just got to set the mood and people will just 
create ghosts on their own using their imagination. Just make it dark, make it spooky. Nothing is scarier than what the human mind can conceive. I mean, it is pretty spooky there. I yeah, will say that for, yeah. for nothing. <laughs> like I said, I don't believe in it, but I do get the creeps. You believe in it enough. When I'm there by myself. <laughs> yeah. For it to scare you. Yeah. Just, just because what if? What if the matron who lives in the laundry and is has a notoriously foul temper just decides that she doesn't like the look yeah. of me one and day. And what if one day you catch her sleeping with Bigfoot? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just as likely that both exist. <laughs> could be just hanging out, and one day you just walk right into the laundry room, and there they are. Having the nasty. <laughs> yeah. God, if, if Matron ever listens to this damn podcast, I am fucked. I finally watched Infinity War. Way! After, yeah. When did it come out? When did it come out? It was like oh, three months ago. Oh, God, yeah, months ago. Okay, so I don't know if I'm supposed to have watched. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if I watched all the Avengers movies. First of all, the Avengers. What are they avenging? I don't get that name. They're avenging your butt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Had they done that at the first movie, like had a butt that was destroyed... And they're like, they banded together to avenge the butt. That would make sense. But did anybody yeah. die at the start? Anyways, Avengers, I don't know what they're avenging. Makes no sense. But, um, so I'm watching this movie. And mind you, the last Marvel movie I saw was uh, Black Panther, where we had Killmonger, this, like, sort of three dimensional, very, um, layered. Well, yeah, layered is a very a good. A humanized villain. Yes, yes. And so then now we got this guy, this giant Thanos guy, and he's, like, searching for his, like, magic stones. And so uh, I assume that, okay, this guy just wants to kill everything. Classic villain. You know, don't try to explain it. Don't try to humanize him. He just wants to kill everything, and that's good. We're just going to have fun and watch things explode. And then, then he starts talking about his stupid fucking plan. I'm like, oh, my God. You see... I saw that my world was uh, ravaged by um, uh, overpopulation. Basically. Overpopulation, and um, I just wondered what what if there was no more overpopulation? What if we just killed half the people, huh? That seems like an excellent idea. I'm glad China didn't think of that. They have like a one-child policy, which even that yeah. seems a bit restrictive. But yeah, at least they didn't want to wipe out like half the fucking people, which which just seems absurd. Yeah. He's like, but no, nobody's going to feel any pain. It's just going to happen in a blip. But then I'm like thinking like, okay, so then what happens next? Like they're just going to have more kids and you're going to have the same problem over again. Well, it wasn't even like it was unpainful. It was scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Stark, I don't want to... I feel strange, Mr. Stark. Yeah, they turned to, like, ash and shit, and it was, like, dramatic yeah. and stuff. and they saw it. Yeah. So they were... They had that, like, anxiety and fear that comes with death that must be overwhelming, but... And who can forget uh, Nick, Nick Cage's... Uh, the uh, Nick Fury, sorry. Yeah, Nicholas I've Cage. I've been listening to a lot... <laughs> I've been lo- I've been uh, listening to a lot of Nick Cage and the Bad Seeds. Uh, can you do a Nick Cage recently? impersonation of him dying? <laughs> Get ready for no. Is that, Get ready is, that for is that Nick Cage doing Elvis? Um, no, that's uh, Nick Cage, the musical art. No, it's Nick Cave. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're all over the place. It's not Nicolas Cage at all. <laughs> It's half past ten, mate. I'm delirious. Yeah, so he wants to kill half the people, which makes no sense to me. It's like, they're just going to come back. It's like taking three days of antibiotics and then just like saying, I'm good. Just tossing out the window. <laughs> Don't need to take yeah. the rest. Not going to come back. <laughs> but first, we were thinking that, okay, maybe he just does it every day, right? Yeah. Like, maybe he like wakes up, brushes his teeth. Okay, time to kill half the people again. <laughs> But would it be half the people, or, or like, would it kill, be like, half the new tenth population? Of the people, since he killed half last time. Yeah. How quickly does population grow? That takes that would take some really complex mathematics. He'd have to spend the full day figuring out how many people had been born, and trying to figure out what was going on. And so that would take him the whole day. And by the time that he's figured out what the uh, 
number, what the new population was, and how much he had to kill to get it down to the even half figure again, uh, he'd have, well, it'd be evening, so he'd have to do the calculations all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would just be a complete waste of time. So the next thought is that, okay, so why even kill the people? Why not just go, go right after the sperm? Yeah. Right? Is it just too much sperm? Like, because then nobody gets hurt. I mean, it's just their balls. I mean, maybe their balls get a little ashy. Oh, like, you know, Mr. Stark, that's not My pleasant. balls don't feel so good. And you see, like, like ash coming out of your balls and shit. I think like, that's oh. more terrifying than just full out turning to ash. No, because your balls are still there. It's just the sperm that's mm. turning to ash. And maybe... Maybe there's some build up there. Maybe that's what Thanos was thinking. He's like, I have a perfect plan. I'm going to kill all the sperm. Then he like he wipes out some sperm and then it like poisons Spider-Man's balls. I don't know what his name is now. Peter yeah. Parker. Well, Tom Holland. That's the one. The, the yeah. adorable one. So, so maybe that's it. Like if he wipes out the sperm, like all that ash builds up and it it becomes like, I don't know, poisonous and you die anyway. So, Maybe that would be way more painful. But uh, you know what I think the best solution for Thanos would have been? Because what? with the Infinity Stones, you can do anything. So you know what he could have done? Is uh, he could have increased universal resources and access to birth control. <laughs> yeah. Or he could have just published a slew of Bigfoot erotica pics and then nobody would want to have sex anymore. <laughs> yeah. Just be like, you have to look at these every day. Yeah. And if you still want to, and if you still want to reproduce, then you're part of the next execution. Yeah, I think I'd rather die. I mean, the only person left at that point would be, again, Congressman Riggleman. Hey, at least he'd win the election. Yeah, that's true. He'd be President Riggleman at that point. Yeah. He'd be the only one left. My first declaration <laughs> as uh, president of the United States of America is that uh, we need to find Bigfoot. <laughs> and you need to bring him here in whips and chains. And you need to bring a camera, take pictures of Bigfoot, preferably naked. Exactly. <laughs> and it is going to be mandatory viewing as we do the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning in our schools. We will pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Bigfoot's dick. And the best part is, since every picture of Bigfoot is naturally fuzzy, um, it's going to have its own censorship. Yeah. You put it right on the flag. Wait, is Bigfoot going to be on the flag? No, what it is, right? It's the Star Spangled Banner. Mm. But instead of being stars, <laughs> okay. it's sperm and it's scattered all uh, over the flag. Uh. I'm a creative genius. <laughs> and these are living sperm, not ash sperm that Thanos has killed, right? Yeah. Because, again, he's not going with that plan. <laughs> exactly. See? If he just spent an hour on our pod, he wouldn't have had to fucking kill all those people. No. He'd just be like, well, shit, maybe my idea is a bit stupid. <laughs> he could have literally just made it so that there were enough resources in the universe. There he had are... <laughs> all of the Infinity Stones. There are a lot of solutions to the problem. I mean, like, if I'm in my room and I'm hot, I can open a window. I can turn on the AC. I can maybe uh, take my shirt off and be sexy. Uh, <laughs> I can do a sure. lot of things. What I'm not going to do is take a sledgehammer and tear down the fucking wall so that like there's more ventilation. That's what I'm not going to do. That's not the first thing that pops in my mind. But Thanos... I don't know. You're, uh, you're used to these uh, stiflingly hot summers. We're not. I have been trying to open up my windows as wide as they can go, and I want a sledgehammer. <laughs> you do realize that the windows can open, right? Like yeah, they don't open far enough because I'm short. Oh. So I can't open them out enough. See, again, that's you don't stop there and go for the sledgehammer. You say, wait, how do I get taller? Maybe I stand on a box like Tom Cruise. Maybe I get a ladder. <laughs> Maybe I use some of the tools around me to figure out a solution that doesn't kill anyone or cause permanent damage to the structural integrity of my building. But Thanos, nope. 
sledgehammer. You could be a steam train. <laughs> what? If you t- it's sledgehammer. This- oh, God. I thought you were going through Nick Cage's greatest hits again. Um... <laughs> Peter Gabriel is Nick Cage. <laughs> Cage. Um. I wanna be the sledgehammer. But. When they try to ex- give a person or a villain a rational reason for doing something stupid, it just makes it seem even more stupid. Because yeah. at least if they were fucking... It overemphasizes the stupid. Yeah, if they were psychopaths and just, like, fucking crazy, then you can sort of understand it as in, okay, they're just crazy. They're not supposed to be rational or be logical about shit, right? But, yeah, they're trying to humanize them, I think, was a mistake. But it was a bit weird that, like, the movies are kind of like a TV show. It's like watching the yeah. last season of Game of Thrones. It's like it ended, and now you got to wait a year for the next one. It's just like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the weirdest thing about the film's portrayal of Thanos is that it kind of wanted him to be a good guy. <laughs> no, you don't get to play that card. You kill half the universe. You don't get to yeah. be a good guy. You kill as many people as you possibly can. You are literally a destroyer of worlds. Yeah, you're a serial killer to the nth degree. Like, even destroyer of worlds sounds cool. Like, it's some kind of, like, you know, title and it's, you know, worthy of praise. But no, you're a serial killer. You've ripped apart one of your daughters for not fighting well enough. And you tortured her for not fighting well enough. That You're not a good guy. You're not doing what's right, mate. No. I mean, with the characters like Loki, they've built up and built up this complex motivation for uh, movies. Over hundreds of different movies. Not hundreds, that's an exaggeration. Over a couple of different movies. They've built up his motivations. They established him first as an overshadowed brother and then as a villain you can't build someone up as being a massive villain show them committing these atrocities over a series of films and then for like the last hour of the film just be like yes but oh his his fam his family was impoverished because of overpopulation (laughs) what a heartbreakingly normal story but yeah, I don't know. I didn't. It was just a fucking explosion fest. I felt like I didn't really enjoy it. Um, but I don't know. I'm probably still gonna watch the next one just to see what happens. But yeah, yeah. You know. I'm pissed that Bucky died. Who's Bucky? Still, Bucky, Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. Bucky. Oh. I was like, Bucky, you have a Bucky? What are you gambling on? <laughs> I wish I could afford to gamble. I didn't even know you like sports. Sports, 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 sports. <laughs> My sports bookie. I'm gonna. Why am I talking like a cowboy? Now, did you um, did you see the massive World Cup fever that swept through England for all of a week? Hmm. I did hear people talking about it here in the state, it's which is unusual. Home. Um, normally, we don't care about soccer. It's coming home. There was like a solid week where I was thinking, "Hang on, we could actually win the football." England Mm. could actually win. Like, we were actually doing well. Wait, wasn't it like Croatia and France that went to the fucking final? Yeah, but we had a really good run of matches, so... um, Oh, I'm sure you did. Yeah, so we won our first match in the group stages, which we haven't done for years. We ended up slamming Panama 6-1. But correct me if I'm wrong, aren't you... Isn't England like a, a, a football country? Like you it like is, the but sport? we're shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Croatia sounds like a place that, oh, this is like a once-in-a-lifetime run. Yeah. But... No. Yeah. But the thing, the thing that was so heartbreaking was for, like, 70 minutes of our match against Croatia, mm. we were winning. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. No, we were. We were 1-0 up. <laughs> For 70 minutes. Literally. Technically, the best kind of winning. And then they scored. We ended up going into extra time. 
And they scored again, and the collective hearts of England just broke. Mm -hmm. Was your heart included in that collective heart? Oh, no, I was drunk. (laughs) I just went to bed. Did you grow up watching football at all? Yeah. My family's quite a big football family. I used to play football. Oh, there you go. I wasn't very good at it. I think you have to be indoctrinated into a sport to really enjoy it, I think, from a young age. Well, I've got family who have been, like, pub owners and stuff like that, so football's pretty much Mm. in my blood. Like, if I try to get you into, like, basketball or something, or baseball even, there is no way. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But if you have that sort of indoctrination um, that comes with a young age, then you could more readily, like, enjoy it because it lights up those parts of your brain that... Think back to those halcyon days. Watching the footy, playing the footy. Is that what it's called, footy? Yeah. It's not. Footy. Is there a, is there a big footy? No, but it is very disappointing at its climax. Because <laughs> I know a few people in this country that might want to watch a little bit of big footy. Yeah, um, I'll leave that to you to suggest yeah. to him. Um, You can re- reach him on his Twitter account. I'm sure you can. And Instagram. Now, we know you like the big footy, but what do you think of the little footy? Uh, What do you think of the regular footy? The kind that, you know, the kind with with a ball. (laughs) The kind with one ball. Does Bigfoot have balls? I'm sure he has balls. Probably. We need to ask him. I mean, the the illustration of that book cover is censored. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Is it a barbed? I mean, it could be anything under there. Is it a barbed penis? Is he like a Khajiit? Is he like a duck where he has a corkscrew for a penis? Oh, we have no idea. He might not even have a penis. It could just be like one of those like fucking... You know how they do that, like those skits where they censor your words to make it sound like you're saying bad yeah. words? Could be the same thing. They're censoring that crotch area, but there's really nothing there. He's a Ken doll. Yeah. There's like kittens and fucking butterflies down there. It's all like fucking, you know, kid friendly. To be fair, I know what kittens are like, and I think that's more terrifying than the Bigfoot penis. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, on that note, that's it for this episode, Lord Friendly. Uh, Kid Friendly, Lord Friendly, ah. course, as always. <laughs> uh, tune in next week where we talk about other types of erotica, perhaps the Loch Ness Monster erotica that you've always been wanting to hear, the... Uh... I'll, I don't know, help me out here. I'll do a seductive reading. <laughs> the, yeah, the chupacabra erotica. That the, uh, been I'd say vampire way. erotica, but that's a pretty tame subgenre, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. That's nowhere near chupacabra stuff. Yeah. But yeah. So tune in for that. Goodbye. All right, goodbye. So you think Batman has a fake dick to go with his fake nipples? You'd think if he's going to fake one thing, he's going to fake other stuff too, right? Just to keep the suit, you know, anatomically correct. Oh, like uh, oh, like the plastic lips from uh, Batman and Robin. Yeah. Ice yeah, to meet you. <laughs> just his entire body is just completely fake. Like he has another body on top of the body. So he's he just a blow up doll. Yeah, he has the fake six pack in on top of the regular six pack you know the fake nipples on top of the regular nipples so the fake dick on top of the dick so you know how it is